Okay. Hey everybody, here is my tutorial video for blind. Um, if classical guitar or arpeggiated finger picking or any of that is foreign to you, this is going to be a brand, another branch of your uh, guitar playing tree that you're about to grow. And uh, life is pain, Highness. So, um, yeah, it's it's. I'm still working it out. Um, got fingernails. Probably trim these fingernails off and let these fingernails stay. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, I was fighting with the chords on this one myself personally. It's a bit of an awkward one. Um, if I'm I'm trying to play it like the record, I don't know if I'm playing it exactly like the record. I'm probably not. I think it's two guitars uh, in there to do it probably. And uh, as usual, I'm probably trying to condense everything down to one. Um, so if you were playing this by yourself with no band backing you up or any strings or any clarinets or any other special goodness, um, it would uh, you still the song would still be recognizable with you just with the guitar and the lyrics. Um, I don't know if I'm going to try to sing on this one. I haven't tried to sing along because arpeggiating. Arpeggiated guitar playing is, is something I have to use my whole brain for and I can't sing at the same time. I've gotten away with not playing the guitar and not singing in my church band for years and years now, so ha ha ha. Um, but I'm sure my day of reckoning will come. I have played guitar in the church band. It's not that I haven't played and sang in the church band at the same time. It's just I have to simplify my playing. And then I'm all frustrated because oh, I have to play this. I have to, can't play my cool... Uh, stuff that I play on the guitar when I can just concentrate on the guitar, but uh, So I've, I've gotten away with being lazy for this long and who knows how long it will last it, Today this video could be that day and I decide I have to make that change <laughs> So anyway, this is the tutorial video. That's how I get to talk in these videos um, Much more than you probably want to hear, but anyway, so all right, let's start off with what's starting at the beginning um, Here's the chords Beginning G major seventh, C major nine, uh, another is G major seventh, and a D second with an F sharp in the bass. Um, I'm music dumb, so I go by what I'm told. Um, so, you know, if you guys have figured this out, that's awesome. If you, if you haven't, hopefully this gets you on your way or get, at least gives you something, some way of playing it. Oh, my right foot is so numb. Um, so, Oh, let's see. Um, G major seven, so um, so I'm doing that, and I'm muting, the, pressing down the sixth string while muting the one below it, and and you can do the you can do the I'm using my pick for a second just to make it sound nice and clear up that they do in the recording um, there, so. Um, but uh, I have to learn to do it with my nice long finger, um, like that, and fingernail or whatever. I was actually bought some picks for my fingers and haven't used them very much. I always thought if I learned how to play with my fingers, I would play actually play better than using a pick. You like the Lindsey Buckingham approach to guitar, and you actually be able to have more range of motion and be able to play more notes individually and be more articulate in my playing and stuff like that versus just being that guy who strums along to every freaking song, which is not the worst way to go, but um, nor is country music bad at all. Country music's very good. I listen to a lot of country. I listen to so much of what George Clay and Sixpence did was so very country sounding if you take the time to notice. Um, oh, my right foot is numb. Oh. Okay, so anyway, enough whining and on with the lesson. Um, so how am I playing that? G major seven, so. So I'm plucking, I guess, what would be the, the second, third, and, and sixth strings. Okay, so let me do that the way I'm going to do it, so. Can. So like that. Um, and then I move on to a C major 9. Now I'm doing this shape. You know, the technical C major 9 formation, I don't know. I'm trying to make it sound like a record, so. So I'm doing this. When I press all the. So that involves the second, 
fourth and fifth strings with uh, the fourth string being pressed down on the second fret and the um, second and fifth strings being pressed down on the third fret and some of you are going to do it like this because that's your habit and I'm not going to worry about which fingers to tell you. You can look look at the video and what my fingers are doing and choose to do that or choose to do it the way that you're more comfortable with. Um, so yeah. So, and then I do another G major seven. So I mean, if I didn't explain that G major nine, let me do it again. Cause I, I yapped and yapped and yapped and forgot. Okay. So, um, and I do, when I do that, I do a, I lift up the finger that's covering the second string on the third fret to get that, um, uh, note. So all together, that's. And it may be as simple as doing this, you know, that the quote unquote G major seven that. So that means I'm covering both the second and sixth strings on the third fret while muting the fifth string below it when I do the G major seven chord. So doing this, it's kind of like doing a G. It's like a, where I mute the A string like I always do, like love song for savior. So it's like this. You know, if I were strumming, but I'm not finger picking because I want to sound like the record, so. I like what was suggested with the, that sounds more classical to me, like the recording. So I go ahead and I do that, so. Um, that shape involves pressing the 6th string on the 3rd fret, the 6th and 2nd strings on the 3rd fret, and the 3rd and 4th strings on the 4th, so, and you get, you should get these, these notes. And that's your G major 7. And my C major 9 again. And another G major 7, and then a D 2nd, so I do a... For the D, for the D 2nd with the F sharp in the bass, so I go, I just go. Find if I can actually get that that sixth that first string to sound. I'm just do a pull off of those four strings, just the first, second, third, and sixth. I'm covering to let you know what I'm covering is the the second fret, both the sixth and third strings. So, and then the second string on the third. So, so are the strings I'm pressing down, and then I'm. Once again, this, this finger is resting on the fifth string to mute it, so if I were to ever do a that string would not that would not make a sound like it's not supposed to. <clears throat> you know, if I just wanna before I move into the verse, that's fine. Um and E major nine. Okay, E major nine, I don't know. It's what it is. It's what is it? This which the record sounds like they're doing something more like like I'm kind of doing what I did with that C major nine chord with that only now my root is an E so I'm going strings I'm covering are the fourth and fifth on the second and the second string on the third fret so the notes cover the cover note should sound like and then you can together and I'm plucking the second third and, and sixth string so that's and then I lift up my ring finger or whatever finger you're using like I said if you're doing it this way you're still getting the so there that's on cynical just your way play the doubting Thomas feel the scars and wipe the stains. So on wipe we play C major seventh. On stains we play A minor ninth. Um, again, if I didn't, did I take the time to show it up to you? There's verse one. Pause the video. Look at the chords. So what I'm saying, there's something to see as well as what I'm saying. What you're hearing actually sort of has some picture in your mind of making sense there. Um, 
So, okay, so the C major seven, I know a C major seven, you know, you can go like what's suggested, but I, I do, um, no, I don't do that. I do, because I think that sounds more like the record, so I'm, I'm, okay, what am I covering for the C major seventh? I'm covering the fourth string on the second fret. And then on the third fret, I'm covering the fifth and second. So those covered notes are, and then all together, that's, and then when I pluck it, I go, lifting that finger, and then, um, and wipe the stains. Um, real, well, really what I'm doing, sorry, that wasn't enough. I'm doing the, both my the fingers on the third fret and just leaving the one finger on the second fret fourth string to go and I'm plucking the second third and fifth strings and I just well I don't I go let's see all together that's and I do it again or so you fight and retreat and talk yourself out of believing in any and any piece that you can't see. So, and, and you're just repeating that C major seven, A minor ninth thing twice versus just the once with wipe the stains. So. And you could say with the E minor ninth, I'm going, um, I'm going. three times and then the C major the major C major sevenths and A minor ninths. Um, so the chorus, um, what I did for that was this. Um, and I like it and there's gonna be breaks here because I'm still learning myself. C chord, I've got the second string, first fret, the fourth string, second fret, and the fifth string, third fret. So all together. And I do the way I finger pick it is is the second, third, and fifth strings. So and then I kind of arpeggiate the starting from the fourth, from the fourth going to the third and the second. So I'm gonna put that together because I, I broke it down so much I have to put it back together. So that's what I, that's all the stuff I do with the C, so. Pick, I think I picked the strings the same way I picked the C. So. And I'm going to do the same with the B minor. And I'm always kind of leaving that E string open all the time throughout chords in this song because I feel like it, it more sounds like the record. I mean, you could just. Um, If you want to, I just add the arpeggiation because it makes it a little more interesting to hear um, if it's just you and a guitar. You know, if you have a band to back you up that can, somebody on the keyboards can do some of the string and clarinet business, or you have an actual clarinet player, that's cool. Um, so. I can pick 
pick all those chords the same way, basically. Or I can, you know, once I can have a good mastery of finger picking, I can change it up any way I want. So that's that's an option you have if, as you progress with your playing. Um, then I'm going back to, okay, let me show you what I'm talking about. First chorus. I just pause the video for a second and look at what's going on. So that makes a little more sense, hopefully, by seeing it, not just hearing it. Um, anyway, so moving on to the C major 9. And I'm doing my quote unquote C2 shape. So I'm doing my. And that B again. And then for that G with D in the bass, I'm just. It's all involved on the second, third, and fourth strings. My whatever finger of my choosing is on the second string, third fret. So. It says G major 7 with B in the bass. So if the G major 7 we played before was I'm doing which you know some of you are gonna be like that's a B minor. That's the thing. That's a weird thing about shapes with guitars. The shape is not one chord and only that chord. There's flexibility in it. So technically you know because the root is supposed to be a B I'm quote unquote borrowing my B minor shape to play this G major 7 with B in the bass. So technically I'm playing a G major 7 with B in the bass instead of... So you have to get that flexibility of mind going on in order to, you know, these things come up and you're like, okay, what do I do? See, the B is the root bass, so I need to go from, instead of this, I need to do it here. So there you go. These fingers, the other three fingers didn't have to move. It's just this one jumped from the from there to here. So now it's on, with that chord, it's on the fifth string on the second fret. So, um, and then I go to, so that's in a C second, which to me, good chord choice sounds like a record. When I pick it, it sounds like the record, so I like that choice of chord. Okay, and then, um, Okay, verse two, logical. Now you'll know, you'll hear in the recording, he does a like that. Um, it sounds like, and he does that at the end too. Like when they're like, the strings are fading out at the very end and all that, it's it definitely, if I was trying to play the chord that I felt like it was exactly like the record, it would be. Oops, I can do it. Could just do your quote unquote E minor ninth seventh whatever shape and how different does that sound very much the same it's one note different I guess it's versus so you know if you can if that bothers you if that solidly bothers you that's the best I could do for solving your problem there <laughs> if you care that much um, so you can do the logical, or you can just move right back into your finger picking. You can do it your own. Uh, that wasn't it. And we're doing what we did in the first verse, so I'm not going to explain that again. We'll go ahead and show it to you so you can kind of see where chords fall with lyrics. Um, there. So, and then we're going to do the second page that I have here. Um, there's verse two, and then we have what I labeled as the second chorus, and then the outro instrumental stuff, which I didn't carry on and on with it like it fades out on the record. Um, so I just kind of ended it where it was suggested to end it. So that's what I did. Um, rather than try to chart out all that stuff, which, you know, it sounds great on the recording. I'm not going to argue with that at all, but... Um, oh, my back. Oh, Lord. Um, so what we're really doing... Let me look at the first chorus. Is there anything different going on, really? No. Now, what we learned in the first chorus, we're repeating in the second. 
line, word you call, line, words will fall. Then we have the instrumental happens again. Um, and let me give you that. Um, the chords, and the chords feel weird. Okay, they, they do feel weird, especially when you're playing by yourself and there's no strings to back them up and sort of, you know, support them and make them seem like the relevant and right chords. <laughs> I'm going to say that. Or maybe if you just have a keyboardist who's playing the sheet music along with you, then, then they'll sound right, more right, because they're doing, because I think they, to an extent, they charted out, they notated out what the strings do in the piano, so that can be covered and even possibly transcribed so you can actually have a real string section, play the real string section from the recording, maybe to a certain extent. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a, you know, a professional transcriber and could say for sure, yes, of course, look at the piano music. I would trans could transcribe it and write you all the string parts so that your amazing, talented, and obviously very well-populated uh, church band could play that note for note. Um, uh, so anyway, so the... So the outro we're doing, um, if you can rewind to that for a second, that's cool. And look at what all those chords are, and I'll start naming them off as well. And so it'll actually make sense when you see them. Um, I tried to determine the count too. So I split my counts into eighths to make that more accessible and underlined within the counts where those chords should fall. That's me, I know, being anal for some of you and for some of you saying thank you for doing that. Because I just try to have things land where they should. And if you're trying to show this song to a band that's never, ever heard this song before, you know, you're trying to give them an accurate map of where to go. Um, and especially a band that doesn't read music uh, for the most part. Um, so, yeah. Um, trying to reach those people. Um, okay, so the G major 7 is what our outro starts with. I think it's another upstroke there, um, that G major 7, um, so. Okay, um, hang on a sec. Okay, had to change locations. Okay, so the outro instrumental, um, like I said you can beginning if you want to, and then we move on to some chords that I showed <coughs> that I um, showed you in the, the, the when I hold, held the chart up. Um, so okay, so I'll start explaining those. Uh, seven we did the upstroke then a C major nine to the G with B in the bass so I'm doing my quote-unquote C2 shape again so I'm going and I'm just plucking the second third and fifth string with the fifth string being covered on the second fret for that G with the B in the bass so it's um For the A major, this is A minor sevenths, but I'm doing this. The, the A minor seventh to the E minor with G in the bass. And for the E minor with G in the bass, I'm doing, uh, I'm covering the fourth string on the second fret and the sixth string on the third fret. And I'm muting the fifth, the fifth string below it by resting the finger that is covering the, the sixth string on it. So it's, um, 
And I'm plucking the sixth, uh, third, and second strings. So, and then arpeggiating on the fourth, third, and second strings. And then C major seven. I'm just and these chords. I'm gonna admit they don't sound. They sound weird, but I don't know. You know, if I heard them with the sheet music, maybe it would make more sense. But um, anyway, so some so um an E minor with B. Um, and I'm kind of da 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 to just as throughout each chord sequence set there. Um, so, and then E minor with B in the bass, I'm plucking the, uh, fifth, third, and second strings, making sure that my root is a B, um, instead of a, because it's supposed to be a B, when they put that slash, whatever the letter is, that's supposed to be a root. So, um, and then on the G major seven, I'm doing my... And I'm going because it's G major seven to E minor with G in the bass, and then another C major. Well, it's a C major nine with E minor and B in the bass, and then a G major seven with E minor and G in the bass to finish it out. And then we do another one more blind. Word you call blind. Words will fall and they suggest to end it on an E minor second. And so I do what they did on the record that you hear the, and then, you know, the strings carry on just a little bit longer and then it sounds like a, a microphone hits the floor or something, you know, and then that's the end of the song. Um, so yeah, that was that. Um, shoot, four seven, I still have time four seven. Um, Oh, in a way, I did do 4-7. I did a video for um, Weighed Down, which is pretty much 4-7 with different words. So, yeah, so check out my video for Weighed Down for 4-7 to learn how to play 4-7 in a guitar with standard tuning. If they use the alternate tuning, which I'm, I'm, I'm suspect to believe they did, um, maybe I'll do a video with that and put it on this playlist. Um, but anyway, there's blind for you. There's a way to go about it. Me trying to play it as accurately as I can to the record by myself. Um, um, with just one guitar. Um, and if some other uh, method occurs to me, then I'll uh, make another video for that method. So anyway, uh, questions, comments, you know where to leave them. Thanks a lot. God bless.